Welcome to my first episode. Um, in this one, we're going to be talking about 4K footage and 1080, um, how to deal with your 4K footage. A lot of people don't really like to you know, deal with the 4K footage. It's a lot of time, a lot of extra space in your hard drives. So we're going to figure out different ways to make this work for you. What? All right, welcome to my very first episode. Um, this might be a boring subject, I'm not really sure, but um, I'm gonna waste my time so you guys don't have to waste yours. 4K footage is the new standard, um, but it hasn't really been popularized with um, the delivery method. So um, a lot of people st still aren't watching 4K, they can't watch 4K, so is it worth it for you to do 4K? I don't know, that's up to you. But we're gonna go out on location in a minute so I can show you a few different ways to shoot your 4K or um, maybe even not shoot 4K. We'll see what works for you. So I'm trying to find out what the best method is. Um, is it better to shoot 4K, then convert the files to HD, then edit the files in HD, or is it better to take the 4K footage and put it into an HD timeline and then edit like that? Or is it better to take the 4K footage, edit it in 4K, and then down res it to HD when you're exporting? Um, or it could just be better to shoot um, HD right off the bat. Um, so all the footage I'm gonna be showing you here, it's all gonna be shot with a prime lens and a Canon 85 millimeter F1.8, but I'll be shooting it at F8 just to ensure that I have the sharpest image possible. And I'll be shooting it in 4K on my Sony a6300. So when I'm shooting 4K, I'll be using 24 frames a second at 100 megabits a second, which is the highest bit rate that uh, the a6300 will allow for. And then when I'm shooting 1080, I'll be doing 24 frames a second um, at 50 megabits a second, which is the highest bit rate that it, it allows for 1080. And it's all XAVCS if you guys really wanna get into arguments about it. Um, so let's try to figure out uh, how this performs. Okay, so we're back from Eagle Rock. Um, now let's talk about the different methods that I chose to deal with the 4K footage. Um, a lot of you guys probably already know about proxies dealing with 4K. And proxies, basically, you take the 4K footage and you're, go you're going to output a 4K file, but when you're actually editing, you know, your program like Premiere will actually create a low-res file that's easy for your computer to handle. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about is just simply either obviously shooting HD, which is probably the most common thing to do when shooting HD, just shoot HD. Second is to take the 4K size and down res it to a 1080 timeline. And then third is going to be to, before you drop your footage into Premiere or whatever editing program you do, we're actually gonna convert the footage from 4K down to 1080 and see how that might uh, compare in sharpness to you know, uh, just down resing the 4K in a 1080 timeline. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys, and that's actually to take 1080 footage and scale it up to 4K. And um, it's kind of an, an odd thing that you'd wanna do. Um, but it does have its place. Um, for example, I shoot with the A6300, and I'm sure you guys probably know the A6300 has a lot of flaws. It's a fantastic camera, but it's got its flaws. And one of those is it overheats fairly fast when shooting 4K. So last September, I was shooting a wedding, and I shot all the B-roll, 4K, and it kind of had a few temperature warnings here or there, and it's September in Southern California, so it's hot to begin with, and the one thing I didn't want to happen was shooting the ceremony, I didn't want the camera to overheat 
and I would be missing some very important shots. So what I did during the ceremony is I just turned my camera to shoot high quality XAVCS HD footage so I wouldn't lose anything. But when I made the final video for the client, I actually edited the whole thing 4K, but for the ceremony, I took the 1080 footage and turned it 4K. So we're gonna take a look at that and see how that might work, if it will be up to your standards for 4K shooting. It may or may not be, but we're gonna check it out right here. All right, so now it's time to compare all the different methods for taking 4K and bringing it down to HD. So right here you see on the far left, I've just got plain HD that was recorded HD um, right in the A6300. And then to show you what the 4K looks like when it's actually just scaled down in the timeline, you have that in the little second window there. And then the third window, the 4K to HD, that is essentially the same thing as the 4K baseline. All I did was take the 4K footage, bring it down into um, an HD timeline, and then I exported it, just so you could see um, any quality differences you'd be getting between um, you know, seeing it in the timeline and when it's actually exported. So then the final one on the far right, which will probably be the most useful for you, is the 4K down res. And what I did here was I took the original 4K footage and before I put it in Adobe Premiere Pro, I put it through Adobe Media Encoder, which is Adobe's um, con conversion program. And I exported it directly out of there into an HD Apple ProRes. Let's take this, let's take a look at this zoomed in, okay? So all of this here, this is all scaled up 200%. Okay, so, you know, you're, you're kind of getting a little zoomed in window on, on each one of the clips. Um, except for the 4K baseline, of course, that is 100%. Um, so that's what it would look like if you were actually to um, have a 4K video. You can see that there's clearly more, um, more detail there than there is on the, the final two. So you see the HD, I mean, it's looking, you know, even compressed. Um, it's looking incredibly soft, especially compared to the 4K. Um, and then the 4K to HD um, and the 4K down res look very, very similar. I mean, so once again, the 4K to HD, what you're looking at right there is what the 4K squeezed into an HD timeline um, you know, at 50% scale would look like when you export it to HD. So um, the 4K to HD and the 4K down res, which is the 4K file that was converted before editing into a 1080 um, video clip, they look very similar. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, you know, when you're thinking about this stuff. So let's look at the other clips here. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show you guys is um, a comparison between the three HDs, okay? And I added an additional one in here. And I haven't really talked about this much. I didn't even really know what was going to come from this. I didn't know which one would be better, which one would be worse. So here we go. This is HD again. So that's HD on the far left. And then I have a new one, HD to 4K. And then 4K to HD, which is basically just scaling down 4K. But that HD to 4K, now this is where things can kind of get a little bit interesting. This is where I mentioned to you guys where I was shooting at that wedding and I had a shot that I needed, but I knew my camera might overheat. Actually, I knew it was going to overheat because it had overheated earlier. So what I did was I shot in HD the most important parts of the wedding, whereas the rest of the wedding, I shot 4K. So the, the only stuff that was HD was the ceremony, the parts that I couldn't make up afterwards. Um, 
And to make it look like it fit in with the 4K footage, what I did was I took the HD footage, I stuck it in a 4K timeline. And when I put it in the 4K timeline, of course, it's really tiny compared to the, you know, the big screen. So I had to scale it up by 200%. And clearly, you know, the HD doesn't really do well, especially when it's scaled up. But what I did was I added just a quick sharpening effect to the timeline and um, played around with it, made sure I didn't over sharpen, made sure it wasn't too blurry still. And then it actually looked passable. Even when I was checking it out on like 4K DVs and stuff, you couldn't really tell the difference between the 4K and the HD. I mean, if you have a trained eye, obviously you'll be able to know the difference, but it looks pretty good. I mean, look at this. You have the HD on the left, which is just plain HD. And then the HD on the right, or I guess in the middle, that was the same exact footage as the footage on the, the left there. But I put it into a 4K timeline and then sharpened it from there. And you're going to actually have better performance as far as image quality goes to scale something up and then sharpen it there and then scale it back down just because the computer has more pixels to deal with, a little bit more information to try to approximate what the sharpened image should look like. So if you were to sharpen the HD footage, that's just 1080 on a 1080 timeline, it will not look as good as the HD that you sharpened in the 4K timeline and brought back down. Okay, so clearly 4K is the winner here. Um, but there are some benefits and drawbacks as you clearly saw. The HD, I was incredibly surprised to see how poor it looked compared to 4K or even the 4K down to HD. Um, the 4K, on the other hand, does take more processing power, more pixels, more processing. But there's ways to work around it as you just saw. The um, best way, which I didn't really talk about here a lot, is to use proxy files. And the proxy files are where, you know, Premiere or whatever program you use will actually create a lower resolution file to be able to edit the 4K. But then when you export, it'll be the full resolution, no problem, no problem with the um, hard drive space or even extra processing power. And then on the other hand, I would say you aren't really losing a lot of sharpness by before you edit, just converting through Adobe Media Encoder or whatever program you like to use, just convert it down to, you know, an Apple ProRes or whatever um, file type will work best for you. Just convert it down to an HD file and it'll look really, really good. It'll look way better than the HD that a normal camera would shoot. So um, I would say in conclusion, shoot 4K. If you can edit 4K, that's the best. Um, if not, just try to figure out how to work around with proxies. I'll probably do that in another video. Um, but for this one, 4K. Clearly the winner, the way of the future. So um, if you like this video, um, let me know in the comments. If you have any additional questions that maybe I skipped over something, just let me know. And maybe I can cover some of your questions in a later video. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.